Good evening YouTube viewers and subscribers. So on the bench here is exactly what you see and those of you that know Sato's know what kind of jewel is in here. Now this could be a long video because I've kind of got a lot to talk about. Uh, no this isn't the first time I've looked inside this box. What are you kidding me? Really? I've had this box for over 24 hours and of course the first thing I did was tear into it and look at it. I just had to. So anyway uh, I'll try and keep this short, but got this and another engine from a fellow that have just suddenly appeared on RC groups, didn't list them in the classified section, put a thread in the engine forum saying, hey, are these two engines worth selling or should I just take them to a hobby shop? And I thought to myself, well, why would you ever even take them to a hobby shop? They're not going to take them back. So instead of responding to the thread, I just, I saw what the engines were. He didn't list the price, I said, the hell with this, I'm going straight to PM, sent him a PM saying, I want these engines, what's the price? He came back fairly quickly, gave me a price, I was like, that's fine with me, let's do it. So anyway, the other engine I'm not sure if I'll make a video of, but I, there's a good chance of that. So this is a Sato FA30 open rocker Mark II engine. The best I can find is that this engine dates back to about 1980 or 1981. This was a fairly complete engine, and I say fairly because it wasn't complete complete. But here is the engine. And as you can see, I'm going to move the box out of here for a minute, but I am going to go through the box contents quite thoroughly because there's some interesting things there. So here's the engine. Now I say fairly complete in that it did not have this choke mechanism on here. This is a choke mechanism that I just so happen to have and I put it on here to make it a more complete engine. It did not have the washer or nut. I just so happen to have those from an earlier purchase also and I put those on. So let's go I'll talk about the engine first and then we'll go through the box contents. So the engine came to me, it had decent compression, it's got better compression now. I don't know anything much about this engine other than it was probably run, obviously it was run, but I mean at the time I bought it I didn't know anything about it. The fellow I bought it from said he bought it years ago from his uncle and he really didn't know much about it. So like I said it had compression, so of course one of the first things I'm going to do when I check out a, a used engine is open up the needle valve, or a high speed needle, about two and a half turns. I couldn't connect to the fuel tank and a fuel line here and I plugged this up to see if it would draw fuel. Now those of you that are familiar with my channel know that this is not the first Sato open rocker engine I've had. I've had a Sato FA40 uh, open rocker engine and that engine was actually it was a nice engine but it had a really shitty carb on it. In fact I made several videos and went through a lot of crap try to get that engine to run right and the carb that came with that engine just really sucked and it never really ran right. So I eventually ended up selling that to a good friend of mine, Brandon. So anyway, when I was doing my fuel draw test, I didn't see any fuel being drawn in. I was like, oh shit, what the hell's going on here? Now I was I didn't have I did have the choke mechanism on there. I took that off, plugged it, still no fuel. And I thought I also heard a slight hiss or a slight the intake valve leak as I was turning it over so I was like oh shit this isn't good <clears throat> so what I ended up doing was pulled this whole intake manifold off I wasn't gonna do a look inside on it and, and I did a look inside personally but I'm not gonna do it on video but I was starting to get concerned so I was like well you know what before I do anything else to this engine let me at least just check the valve lash and see maybe the valve lash is way out because they felt kinda loose I mean, bottom line is they felt kind of loose. So I get my tools out to check the valve lash. This adjuster nuts were completely loose. These nuts holding the rocker arms in place were completely loose. They weren't tightened on at all. Now this is obviously a very different setup than a modern Sato engine. These actually have, the grub screws actually have a nut on there instead of threading solely into the uh, head piece here. So those were loose. I was like, oh shit, you know, whatever, you know, I don't know what's going on with that. So I set the valve lash per spec, and after I set the valve lash, 
I started to rotate it through and it stopped. Just, it wouldn't go anymore. It's on the exhaust stroke, it just wouldn't stop. I was like, holy crap, what happened here? Well, what happened was the exhaust valve was actually coming in contact with the top of the piston. So I was like, oh shit, this is not a good thing at all. I said, because I set the valve lash to spec um, exactly, and it's contacting the piston. So I was like, well, you know what, I guess I'm going to have to take the head off. So I ended up taking the head off to make sure I didn't have anything weird happening inside there. Maybe, a, you know, the valve was bent, the exhaust valve was bent, and since it actually made contact with it, and maybe the previous owner ran it like that, maybe the piston is damaged. I don't know. So I took the head off. Now, this, as you can see here, is a two-piece head. It's got this head, and then this is all one casting, unlike modern Sato engines, which this whole headpiece is bolted to the crankcase. Not the same way here. So it was very easy to just pop this head off and check it out. <clears throat> now the thing I thought was interesting was when I took this apart, I couldn't find any reviews or any real information on the FA-30s at all. Only the FA-40s where they kind of mentioned the FA-30 and they said, well, and unlike the FA-30, the 40 is, so I was kind of trying to discern some of the differences between the 30 and 40 by what uh, Peter Chin was saying in his reviews about the FA-40. So I took the head off and noticed the top of the piston is domed up, which is interesting. Uh, so it's got a dome piston, but I didn't see any evidence of any damage, uh, uh, piston or valve strike on the piston or anything like that. Now this is a much more used engine than I thought because the top of the piston was pretty black. Not thick residue, but it was dark. And the inside of the head was, it was also dark. So it had been run, the valves moved fine. I did not take the valves out of the head to verify straightness or anything. They just, I just moved them and they seemed fine. So I was like, well, the hell with this. I'm just going to put it back together. And I put it back together and the same thing. So I was like, well, shit, you know, that tells me, you know, the only thing I can think of, Sato would never design an engine where you're going to have, you set the valve last, you're going to have a valve hit the piston. I mean, that just isn't going to happen. So the only thing I can think is that maybe this exhaust valve spring is compressed and it's weaker even though it does seal or maybe the push rods were not the same length maybe one was longer than the other so I took both push rods out which is a very easy thing to do here you just do that with any open rocker engine you just kinda I pulled pull those out they were both the same length didn't have any kind of issue on the intake valve at all setting it to spec so there's an issue somewhere in the exhaust side so I'm not sure, but right now, so what I did was to set the valves, this one is set to spec. What I did here on this one was I rotated it through until it was making contact with that valve. And then I just loosened the gap just until it wasn't making contact with that, the valve wasn't making contact with the piston and it would turn over freely. So that's how this is set now, and this is how the engine is going to get run, at least for the first time, and we'll see how things go with that. So, and as you can also see, this older style Sato has the glow plug in the front of the head. So let's, uh, that's enough about what's going on with this engine. Let me sh go through the contents of the box, because I saw some interesting things in here. Um, some conflicting information, which I thought was interesting, and some other things that maybe give me a clue about this exhaust valve thing. So some of the things that were included, which are not normally included with an engine, was a bag, stapled bag, that has two, ex two valve springs and an extra push rod in it. Um, don't know that, like I said, I don't know the history of this engine, don't know why they're there, but it implies to me that the previous owner who ran this engine, not the person I bought it from, may have encountered a similar issue that I saw and maybe this was his attempt to remedy it. I don't know. So we'll have to dig deeper into that and see. <clears throat> and then this little bag here that came with a couple extra screws, I have no idea what they're for, but it looks like they might be for um, attaching the car up here. And then in this bag, we've got the little exhaust stub and the full, well, I will say almost the full 
That looks like the full complement of tools that were included. You got the spanner, which this spanner is actually too large. I don't know where this spanner wrench came from actually because that's too large to go on on there, but that looks like an OS. That's an offset. That's an OS offset OS spanner, so that doesn't even go with this engine, which is interesting. And then <clears throat> a couple of wrenches and these two items in here, the feeler gauge and this uh, pull rod for the choke mechanism are actually things that I had on hand and I added because they weren't included in it. But it's interesting that I didn't notice that that spanner wrench isn't the right size, but it's not. So that's not original to the engine. Next and finally is the bag of documentation. And this is where the interesting uh, conflicting information comes from. <clears throat> so. We have the original Sato FA30 stickers, which is always a really cool thing. If you can ever get an engine, especially a vintage one like this, that still has the stickers on it, that's cool as hell. This sheet here is the accessories for the FA30 Mark II. Spanner for tappet adjustment screw. Hexagonal spanner wrench. Oh, those are the hex keys. Tappet adjusting screw gap gauge. Needle valve extension bar. Opening and closing bar for choke valve. So those are a couple of things that I added. Okay, here's another, here's where we start, we get to some really interesting stuff here, and it says Sato Engine Instructions, this is a supplement. Fuel. We highly recommend Tower Hobbies 4-cycle fuel, 15% nitro, for your Sato engine. Your Tower Hobbies, or see your Tower Hobbies catalog for current price. It contains just the right blend of synthetics and castor oil and has been specially formulated for use with four cycle engines such as the Sato line, use tower stock number or whatever to order. So I think that's interesting because of the age of this engine dating back to the early 80s and they're ref referencing tower hobbies and tower hobbies four cycle fuel which I think is interesting. I would not have thought to run 15% nitro in this thing but therein lies where some of these conflicts come in. <clears throat> the next thing here is it says glow plug. While the enclosed instructions recommend the Sato glow plug, we find the best results are achieved with any regular RC long plug. In fact, the Tower Hobbies RC long plugs are ideal! Ex exclamation point. Uh, use stock number blank blank to order a package of six. So here, this Sato supplement, they're recommending not even using the Sato glow plug. They're saying just a regular long RC plug, which I think is interesting. So now let's look at this other supplement. Here's another FA30 Mark II supplement. Plug selection. It is very important to select an effective plug because four cycle engine has two revolutions per explosion. Use our new Sato P1 plug for better operation. Order us direct if you could not get it at your local hobby shop. So see that's interesting because you got two different supplements here. One is saying use a regular RC plug but don't use the Sato plug and then this one's saying use the Sato P1 plug. Okay so that's the extent of the interesting part there. I got a couple of limited warranties here. Now here's the actual instruction sheet. This is this is interesting. Now the interesting part about the, the instruction sheet here is two part is that it actually shows an image of the Sato Mark I engine, not the Mark II. But I want to quickly scan through here and see where it says fuel. It just says here use castor oil uh, system with nitromethane 5 to 30 percent approximate for glow engine, appropriate for glow engine use. They have it says approximate. So that's just Japanese translation. Plug. Use hot type glow plug in order to obtain maximum power change fuel and plug severally. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Sanko number X plug is recommendable. So I mean this is <laughs> this is funny because there's a lot of strange Japanese translation to English here with the wording. But uh, so those are the things that I thought were quite interesting about this. The other thing that's kind of interesting is if you look at this uh, you think it would open like this but yet it doesn't. It opens like this. And the whole rest of the instructions sheet on the inside is Japanese. Now maybe, yeah, so I don't know, it's weird, it's like this and then you flip it over. So it has an exploded parts breakdown if you've got really super good magnifying glasses. 
and then some part numbers. But anyway, that has been a quick look, maybe not so quick because of my rambling, of this Sato FA30 engine, which I hope, I hope runs much better than the Sato FA40 engine that I had uh, a year and a half or so ago. But uh, we'll find out, I guess, here soon or whenever I get around to getting this on the stand. But uh, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for some more videos concerning this engine.